Hi, my name is Bethany Malash, and I make videos about living with CMT disease. And five months ago, I had a baby boy. <sighs> Having my son has brought so much joy into my life. But being a mom with CMT also means tremendous challenge. And to be honest, I hesitated even making this video because I didn't want, I don't want to talk about the challenges, but that's how I know that this video is important. There were some challenges that I anticipated. I knew that I would probably never feel safe carrying my son. My balance is poor. My legs are just too weak and I would never want to risk dropping my baby. And I knew that diaper changes might be challenging, fiddling with those little sticky straps. And I'd heard lots of moms tell me that the snaps on those little baby outfits are a real pain to do. And those were true. Those are true. They're hard. Um, it takes me a lot longer to change a diaper than it probably does a mom without CMT. And those little snaps on the baby clothes are just dreadful. I don't know why they exist. <laughs> Um, however, I was gifted a couple outfits that have magnetic fasteners and those outfits are so much better. Love them. Highly recommend. But I can do these things and I'm able to pump milk. I'm able to prepare a bottle. I'm able to breastfeed. And yeah, I need a, a nice breastfeeding pillow so that the baby is well supported and you know, there's certain positions that are easier than others, but I can do all of these things. And yeah, I can't carry my baby, but in the early weeks postpartum, my husband would push me in a wheelchair on walks and I would zip up my son as a newborn in my coat. And those were the most precious times because he was right up against my chest and he would just sleep in my coat for hours so happily. And now that he's a little bit older, he's five months, I'm still working on getting stronger so that I can push him in a stroller myself. But until then, my husband still takes us out on wheelchair rides and my son loves sitting on my lap in the chair and looking at the trees and the double-decker buses going by here in London. What I didn't realize is that I wouldn't even be able to pick up my baby. When he was a newborn, I couldn't pick him up because, well, my hands, as you can see, are very weak from CMT. My fingers are weak and, and my wrists are weak and I wasn't able to adequately support his head, which is so important for a newborn. They're little <laughs> fragile heads bobbing all over the place. And so I couldn't pick him up and support his head safely. And I looked online for devices or tools that would make this easier. I worked with an occupational therapist who ordered me different types of hand and wrist braces, but none of them solved the problem for me. I still just didn't have a good enough grip and I couldn't give him the support that he needed. I did order this device, it has the cutest name, it's called the Snuggle Bundle and it's basically a blanket with handles on it and we could, we could put my son in the little blanket and then I could thread my arm through the handles and I could use that to transfer him from his bassinet to the changing table. And that worked, but it always felt a little bit precarious. <laughs> and quickly he became just too heavy for my arms to have the strength to move him that way. There was one night, I think he was about two and a half months old. And at this point, I'd still never been able to pick him up on my own. If someone handed him to me, I could hold him, but I couldn't pick him up. And he was with me laying on the bed and he was distressed. He was crying. And I so badly wanted to be able to pick him up and just comfort him. Just that simple thing that I felt like any mother should be able to do. 
And I don't know if it's just, I don't know, like a mama bear energy or something got into me. And I just suddenly swooped my arms under him and pulled him up to my chest and picked him up for the first time. And I was so joyful just to be able to do that simple act for my son and to comfort him and he stopped crying. It meant so much to me. And the next morning, I was, I was getting ready for my day, I was getting dressed and I suddenly stopped in my tracks because I remembered that moment the night before and I realized that it had been a dream. And I hadn't been able to pick up my son. And I still can't. And that just made me really sad. The thing is, it's, it's easy in moments like those to feel really sorry for myself and tell me that Motherhood is so much harder for me because I have CMT. But honestly, then I question that thought and I say, is that true? Is motherhood harder for me? I have had phenomenal support. In fact, I don't know anyone in my life who has such amazing familial support as I do. My mom stayed with us the last three months of my pregnancy. And in addition to my husband being here every step of the way, between my mother, my mother-in-law, and my aunt, I have had someone with me every day for my first five months postpartum. And my mom is still here helping me take care of my baby. And I really treasure those times with these women in my life. I really treasure the bond that it's given them with me and also with my son. And I'm really, I'm really aware that in many ways I've actually had a much better postpartum experience than many women who don't have the challenges of CMT. So I'm very careful to watch the narrative that I'm telling myself. A friend of us was actually staying with us for a few days a few weeks ago and I still get a little insecure when people are around that they'll notice that there's a lot of things I can't do by myself for my baby and you know I, I would breastfeed him and then my mom would always you know come to collect him and, and she'd burp him and then change him and bring him back to me for the next feed or the next nap. I wondered what our friend was thinking. So on the third day that she was here, I, I mentioned it to her like, you know, it is hard that I can't pick him up. And she said, oh, I hadn't even noticed that you couldn't because your helpers are just, it's so seamless, right? You've figured out your own way of doing things and your baby is clearly not wanting for care, wanting for love. And that is the most important thing. I'm sure that I'm going to continue battling those insecurities and there are people who make comments that can stick with me. I remember one, this was before I even was pregnant, and this person said, well, I hope you're able to breastfeed because that's the one thing you can do. And let me tell you, that comment was really hurtful when after my son was born, I was struggling to breastfeed. Um, and we, we did overcome that challenge, but I've still had many moments where I feel like less of a mother or like not much of a mother at all, right? Because I'm not doing all of the like mother things of, you know, getting him in his little outfits and doing the burping and all of the changes and Gosh, just being able to pick him up from his crib when he cries. And I was sharing that with my aunt once when she was helping me in those first weeks postpartum. And she said, Bethany, anyone can change a diaper. Anyone can do those little physical tasks, but only you can be his mom. 
and that ultimately like I am the one who is keeping this baby alive right I am the one who is in charge of sustaining him and making sure that he is happy and cared for and sometimes that does mean delegating certain tasks but just because I might ask someone else to change his diaper, that doesn't make the diaper changer the parent. I am the one who's making sure that he is fed and that if he is sick, he gets his medicine and he gets comfort. Because I'm his mom. And I am so grateful to have the experience to be a mom. I get so much joy out of my son seeing him grow and learn and his first smiles and his first laughs were just the best ever. I feel really lucky. And we're just gonna keep learning together, me and my husband and this baby, because that's just what parenthood is <laughs> for anyone. It is a constant stream of learning and figuring each other out. And I've also learned that there is no one version of motherhood. And I wanna stress that to anyone watching. It looks different for everyone. And you have to find out what works for you. This is just a little slice of my experience, but I hope that maybe it is helpful to someone out there who is in a similar position or is wondering if they can be a mom. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to this channel. And I wish you all the joys in the world as you make your own choices about parenthood. Thank you.